So these weeks I'm spending in Copenhagen, the capital of Denmark. And I thought it was about time that I actually went and photographed my capital. I've been doing landscape, cityscape, mostly landscape photography for, I don't know, six years by now. And I actually haven't really photographed Copenhagen. So I have come to the probably most famous castle in all of Denmark, at least for us Danes, because our parliament is literally located right in there on the right hand side of this castle, which is called Christians Borg, Christians Castle or Christians for Fortress, depending on how you translate it to English. So yeah, I'm doing the most basic and simple thing imaginable. I walk right up straight in front of it and photograph it straight on. And I'm waiting right now through sunset until blue hour and hopefully I can get a beautiful blue hour photo. So I am here today for one specific photo which is the one straight on on the castle. However, it's a little bit of time before sunset, so I'm just walking around and yeah, finding different shots. I know about this shot here. I've never shot it, um, but it's uh, very, very aesthetic when it comes to architecture, photography. So you can see down this corridor here. If you ever get here, you can see here's the, the castle. Just walk over here and follow this corridor down here. So I put on the 28 to 200 millimeter lens, zoomed into about 50 millimeter, and basically just lined it up, really making sure that I'm taking care, that I'm not including anything but what's necessary for the photo to work. So I'm going to take one shot without any people and one shot with myself. And uh, yeah, that's it. Super simple, F16, ISO 100, two second shutter. And when I'm taking the one with myself, I will use 10 seconds and just, you know, run into the scene. So the reason why Sophie and I actually moved to Zealand which is the island where Copenhagen is located in Denmark. It was because Sophie actually got a job at the National Museum where she's doing some research on Vikings. So that's the, the, what all her PhD stuff was about. And the fun thing is that right now she's actually working just in here. One of these windows here is her, her place. This is like the National Museum of Denmark. And just along this road up here, we have the, the main castle, Christiansborg. Coming from Jutland, it is actually quite a special thing for me to stand here and photograph the parliament. I haven't been that much to Copenhagen in my life, and I haven't done that much, you know, cultural stuff in Copenhagen. So, yeah, it's a little bit of fun, but uh, yeah, back to photography. So compositionally, as you can see, I put up my tripod, put on the 16 to 35, shooting around yeah, 33 millimeter. That covers the entire castle. You can see here straight on. The thing is with architecture photography, I try to have straight lines on the buildings. And problem is when you shoot with a wide angle, it's something I will have to compensate for in post-processing. So I'm shooting a little bit wider than necessary. The only thing I basically have to take into consideration when I'm making this photo here is this little tower here in the background. You can see it over here. So that's another church tower. And I can't walk into this field here. It's like a horse place we have like some staples over here and some horses come out maybe i can i actually just don't know so i have to take <laughs> this church tower into consideration if i'm moving all the way forward here the church tower is not covered by this part of the castle 
and it kind of looks a little bit weird. So I personally choose to have a little bit of separation and I get that separation by moving just a little bit back, no more than two meters. And that gives me enough separation so it stands on its own. Due to composition, my composition heart wants to clone it out <laughs> of the background, but I think I will keep it in there because this is like such a historical building and a historical monument here in Denmark. So it's probably better to keep it in there. So yeah, right now the sun is setting slowly behind me. So I will just wait out and wait for the blue hour and hopefully there will be some light left in the castle. So we have now entered blue hour. You should be able to see it here. I'm currently filming myself on my A7C and with the 20 millimeter 1.8 all the way down at 1.8. So nice blurry background and it's lit. And you can see how the lights are coming out. It looks really, really beautiful. And the reason why I'm shooting in blue hour when it comes to architecture, photography, cityscape photography, towns and so forth, is that we get all those lights inside the buildings that helps to light up the buildings and define the buildings and just show much more interest, also like depth to the photo. And shooting in the blue hour, you get that beautiful balance between the blues of the ambient light, of course, in the blue hour, and then that yellowish indoor light, which is, of course, contrasty or complementary colors on the color wheel. So blue and yellow, blue and orange is opposite each other, which also looks really, really nice. So yeah, I'm going to stand here for the next half hour and just shoot through the blue hour. And then I will figure out which one shot is the best when I come back home and you can see it here. now come out to a church in Copenhagen and if you're from England you can probably recognize this style. This here is the only Anglican church that we have in Denmark and it really stands out in the landscape at least for me compared to all the many different churches we have in Denmark and I've always really liked this very gothic ish style of the English churches. For me, it's obviously something foreign. So this specific church is one I actually think looks really, really pretty. I have come to one side of the church. You can see I'm on kind of the old fortress here in Copenhagen. And the sun is setting more or less right behind me compared to where I'm shooting the church from right now. And I'm trying to include a little bit of the reflection here, but it is actually mainly just the church. And these very, very beautiful clouds we have this evening. And then I'm trying to include a little bit of this grass foreground right here. What I'm doing is hand-holding my camera, bringing it all the way down to the grass. I'm using the 16 to 35 millimeter, shooting at between 16 and 20 millimeter to get the entire church relative to my position. I have to shoot very, very wide. And then, of course, the sun is lighting up the church and then I have the clouds and yeah, well, everything is just really, really idyllic and really, really romantic on this very, very calm evening. So there's not a whole lot to it. Image stabilization on and yeah, just shooting on. I actually intended to go over here to photograph the church from the other angle and I'll do that in just a moment but right now I'll just I'll just get this shot here it looks so beautiful
So I think just like any other photographer in the entire world, photographing within a town and trying to basically just dodge people when they come close to you and you're talking to yourself on camera. These days, I think it's a little bit more common, but it's still a bit weird talking to yourself on camera while other people are watching you over your shoulder. Um, but I've come to the other side now. Beautiful sunset. Not as many clouds as I hoped for. However, I do think that the clouds that are here are doing a little bit of a job. They're kind of moving in here, so into my scene. As you can see here on the back of my screen, I have this composition right here. So I'm using this stone fence on this bridge-ish thingy as a frame and as a leading line leading up to the church. Basically just using all my compositional tools I know from like regular landscape photography, leading lines, framing, yeah, all the usual suspects. Right now I'm shooting more or less directly into the sunset, so I'm bracketing this shot here. Do I need to? Nah, probably not, but uh, then I have the information if I need it. The only one thing is that I'm just trying to catch some birds when they fly into the scene, which is a little bit hard because it's getting a little bit dark now, so I may have to compromise on the ISO in a little bit, raise it from 100 to like 200 or 320 or something like that. But yeah, besides that, super simple, beautiful evening, beautiful, beautiful photo. Sadly, the light on the church got turned off, so I scratched shooting in the blue hour. Instead, I headed down the pier to photograph the opera across the harbour instead. I used the same techniques as when I photographed Christiansborg Castle. A single long exposure was enough to capture this modern building. With this video I released my much requested landscape photography map of Denmark. It's a digital map which is easy to integrate with Google Maps, so if you are a Dane or want to travel to Denmark and need some inspiration for landscape photography, it is now available. I'll continually update the map as I visit more locations around Denmark and those updates are automatically added to your map too, so you only need to buy it once. A very important thing to note is I don't add fragile locations, but only those that are either already fairly well visited, can handle an increase in visitors, or is part of the official nature tourist locations of Denmark. I've divided the different locations into themes, and with each location I also link to my corresponding YouTube video. There is a link to getting the map in the description of this video. So I have now made my way to Rosenborg Castle, which is also one of the castles in Copenhagen. It is not super big, but it's actually quite aesthetic. Today I actually just came out to do a little bit of scouting, finding some compositions, but as you can see here above the castle, we have these very high clouds, streaky high clouds. And I actually think they are quite aesthetic. So I just started to photograph a little bit it's very simple today, there's plenty of sun, it's more or less in the middle of the day, so just hand holding the photo or the camera. Super easy. Now I'm shooting from this direction here in the first shot, and the thing I'm thinking mostly about is simply just to get a little bit of separation between the towers and the details. So just walking a little bit over here. And you can see I get a little bit of separation between the two main towers. I'm not sure if the shot will work out at all, including a lot of sky. Kind of this weird merge of minimalism and very, very strong leading lines 
down to the castle or maybe like the clouds are beaming out of the castle i don't know you can interpret it as you will but quite fun to play around with So the park here at Rosenborg is a very big public area. It's also a rather touristy area. So you have to dodge a lot of people when you are actually photographing here. Um, it's also a place where people just uh, come to chill. It's a big park. They come to work out as they do here in the background. So it can be a little bit hard uh, to mainly film here, vlog here, but it is fairly simple to use all the different Baroque architectural designs of the park to your benefit. So right now I've come down here to the end of this grass area here. I'm simply just shooting straight towards the castle. I'm using the wispy clouds up here to my benefit. I have got the shot a little bit earlier. I was mainly just thinking about shooting from a low angle like down here and then a vertical composition. Again, nothing big, just handheld. I put on the polarizer just to make those with the clouds a little bit more standing out, but I'm not entirely sure I'm actually going to benefit that much from it or if it just distracts from the castle. But uh, here is the photo from this location. So I have made it to Nyhavn, which is probably the most famous photography location in all of Copenhagen. And it is, of course, due to all these beautiful colored houses. So back in the days when they made this part of Copenhagen, it was very, very inspired by Amsterdam. So everybody who's been to Amsterdam and the Dutch people who are watching this, they will know that Copenhagen is inspired by Amsterdam. For a good reason. Beautiful town or city Amsterdam is. How I'm photographing this is very, very simple. Yet again, I'm just shooting straight on. My very simple compositions when it comes to this. The one thing I've had to deal with is this boat right here. From time to time, there are no boats, other times there are boats, and you have to incorporate them in your composition as you want to. It has a mast, and I've tried to put the mast just between these two houses here, so it doesn't stand out as much as one would think if I just put it like, you know, on top of all the windows or something like that. So it kind of blends in with the photo, so there's a little bit more emphasis on the houses. I have also put on a polarizing filter. I'm shooting at 16 millimeter. And as you can see here on the back of my screen, <laughs> my settings are a little bit off. I tried to catch some seagulls with a fast shutter speed, but I'm just shooting all the way down at ISO 100 and something like F16. And that is it. From time to time, a boat sails in and disturbs the water of course right now the water is beautiful and still so i get a clean reflection and it is all about getting that clean reflection right here and even though i'm shooting with a long exposure i'm not sure it's actually a fast exposure is better because even the small ripples will still blur that reflection a little bit so there's this common misconception that 
if you want to get a clean reflection, you need the water to, to or you need a long exposure, so you need to smooth out that water completely. It's not always optimal. Sometimes you actually want to go with a fast exposure um, because, yeah, if there are ripples, eh, yeah, you will have to try both a <laughs> fast exposure and a long exposure. I'm going to uh, stay here and also shoot through the blue hour in this occasion here. The good thing about Nyhavn is that you can shoot it during midday. You have light on the buildings all through the day. On a blue sky day, it makes a nice contrast to the lit up colored buildings and the reflection in the harbor. Golden hour, um, you need to hit the right time of year because you need the sun in the right angle to light up the buildings, else the buildings behind me and other tall buildings will simply just cast shadows on the buildings. And then of course, blue hour. The downside to blue hour is that the colored houses aren't as pronounced as far as I can imagine. But let's just see how the end result will be. There is around an hour or so until blue hour here, so I'll probably go a little bit back and forward and maybe take a few other photos in the meantime. Nyhavn can be photographed from other angles and perspectives, but with the current placement of the boats, I found this composition to be the most appealing. If you want to learn how I compose my photos, be sure to get my ebooks on exactly that topic composition for landscape photographers. All the principles are exactly the same for when you photograph architecture and cities. And if you want to learn how I edit my photos, be sure to enroll in my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. Just as with the ebooks, the techniques I teach in this course can be equally applied to this type of photography. There is a discount code in the description of the video, along with links to the ebooks and my maps. As always, I'd highly appreciate both a like and a comment.